blues class was our blues class. The first thing we just talked about was getting your swung rhythm through your triple step as opposed to your straight tying triple. So instead of going half, half, full, quick, quick, slow, ba, 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 or one and two, three and four, half, half, whole, we want to have that two thirds, one third split. I gave you several strategies for getting comfortable in that. The most common way of counting that is to use the and, uh, and step on the up. Uh. One and, uh, two, three and, uh, four, five and, uh, six, seven and, uh, eight, or I told people medium, short, long, medium, short, long, triple, then step, triple, then step, are all kind of ways to say the syllables in a way that will assist you. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 rather than ba, 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 if that makes sense. Um, I did mention how, like, I don't think you're not allowed to do straight timing triples on blues, or you're not allowed to do swami triples on contemporary music. Like, I'll use both as variations. It's just the one that I'm going to do mostly through the dance, if that makes sense. Um, we also, a little tangent about how the rolling count, one and a two and a, it's used for two purposes counting the swung rhythm of the triple, but also for just working on smooth motion. So you'll hear people work on like six and a one, even when they're doing three and four for their triple steps. Uh, okay, then we talked about listening to blues music differently. First thing was understanding that blues music isn't homogenous, right? Just like contemporary music, Sounds different, some of it's more or less energetic, pulse, smooth, whatever. Blues music is very similar. I don't feel like it varies as much, but it does vary. So make sure when you start off with a blues song, you take the same time to go, what does this blues song feel like? And you don't just go, oh, it's blues, and pigeonhole, and it all feels like this. Second thing is, what are we listening to? Um, blues music tends to have more of a focus on the rhythm section and the instrumentation because it uses real instruments. And the melody, the lyrics, the singer tends to be not as much the focus. Whereas contemporary music tends to have more of a focus on the melody, the singer, the words, and less of a focus on the instrumentation in the background. That doesn't mean it's not there at all. Contemporary songs still have instrument, interesting stuff in the background. And blues songs still often have an interest in singing, right? Like both of those happen. It's just what's there more, right? So listening to that a little bit differently and making sure that you're listening to the right pieces of music. If you're only accustomed to listening to one of those, the often the other genre will often feel very boring to you because you're listening to the stuff you would normally hear in contemporary or blues that's not present switch to the other one. So you need to change what you focus on to make sure the song still sounds interesting. Some songs are just boring, but in general, right? Okay. 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 Then we talked about how, what I'm focusing on tends to cause me to dance differently. Because we're focusing on the instrumentation and the rhythm, we tend to hear more things that are being added in as opposed to smoothed over. Which means I tend to want to do more things where I put extra rhythm in as opposed to taking extra rhythm away. So there's like less of this and more of like this, for example. It's not that I don't take rhythms away in blues songs and I don't add rhythms in contemporary songs. It's just which are we doing more? Right? And so then we went through several specific examples, making sure you're comfortable with the kickball change rhythm, which I can use to start a pattern. I can also use it at the end, and the kickball change right there. Sometimes I'll do it through an entire move. I'll be like, kickball change, tap ball change, twist ball change, oh again. And we'll use that rhythm over and over again. Like, and I would say in contemporary music, like your walk, walk, and your triples are your most common rhythms. And after that, like hold step, tap step, brush step is probably your next most common 
Then Paul James really after that. To blues music, I'd reverse that. I would say your long walking, your triple are your most common, and then your kickball change is your next most common rhythm, and then like the tap step comes in sometimes. So shifts, which I do more. Um, we talked about like the quadruple step rhythm. Make sure you get comfortable moving this to different places. We did the version on the heels. We played with great lines. Uh, we did just the like continuous pitter pattern feet, where you're just like. I just hear piano or a guitar is going crazy. And I can do that for an entire pattern. And it's very inexact. And it looks like I'm doing fancy footwork. But I'm just going like this really fast with my feet all over the place in a very non specific way. Right? Um, so, those are all kind of specific examples of ways you could add more rhythm in to feel like you were dancing to the section or the piece of the music that you want to be listening to more, right? So we do more forward to blues, but we do more forward to blues because the piece of the music that is more interesting tends to make more sense for forward. Um, okay. Beyond that, um, okay. Beyond that just one other tip to kind of keep in mind for blues music that I can find that I find can be really helpful for people is Watch for a lot of like specific movements. There's a lot of movements that you'll see a lot in blues music that also work for contemporary music. But you just see them all the time for blues music. And we did like four of those, right? And the reason you see them so much is because they kind of embody the things that we talked about. So like we have the kickball chains, but like swivels. You see that a lot. I very briefly showed you the kickball change in different places, but another one is like kick and kick or tap and tap is really common. Stutter steps, like this are really common. So one really good way to get good at dance in this style of music is to watch dances and look for specific movements that people do to that style of music. And it's not just like, oh, well there's 10 official blues footwork things that I need to have to blues music. Um, it's more like there's 10 or whatever blues footwork things you see a lot because they embody what we talked about, which is curing those rhythms and adding things in. So not only does using them give you some really good things to fall back on, but they help you do what you need to do to blues music. So we got through like four or five examples, but if you watch videos, you'll see more and more of those where it's like, oh, I see this a lot when people are dancing to blues. I see tap and tap all the time. I should probably figure that one out so I can be comfortable with it. And that's where you kind of take what we talked about, build on it farther. Alright, and cut.